Hello guys and welcome. I am Ahmed Adel and this is Cost Engineering Professional. And in this video, we will be talking about activities, relationships in project management. So if this is your first time visiting our channel, please consider subscribing, liking the video, comment, share, show us love guys, because we love you so much. And with this, let's get into the video. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, what are we going to be talking about here? We are going to be talking about activities, relationships in planning and the scheduling or in project management. So what is the definition of activity relationships? What are these relationships? Activity relationships are the relationships that exist between activities in a project schedule. And the types of these activities, as we can see here, we have the finish to start relationship and we have the start to start we will explain them in details don't worry i'm just like starting with you on what are these and what are the types of the relationships that are available then we have the finish to finish then we have the start to finish relationships so these relationships exist between activities in a schedule when we make a program a time schedule on any software the activities has relationships who has to start in order for who to finish or who has to finish in order for who to start and all these things okay so let's take a look at the first relationship which is finish to start so this is a logical relationship in which a successor activity cannot start until a predecessor activity has finished and if you guys don't know what a successor is what a predecessor is i recommend you to um, go to the video description i leave a link to my previous video where i explain in details everything about successors predecessors and the critical path method and uh, you can find also the link in the top right corner anyway so a successor is the activity that will come after and the predecessor is the activity which is before so in a finish to start relationship the successor activity cannot start until the predecessor activity has finished so here is activity A, this is the start of activity A, and this is the finish of activity A, and this is the duration. So if it's starting, let's say at one and finishing at five, so B cannot start until A is finished. So if A is finishing on five, then B will start, let's say on six, day number six, and then D will take, uh, B will take its duration and it will finish. So this is the finish to start. The predecessor has to finish, in order for the successor to start okay so this is the first one now second one is the start to start and start to start means what this is a logical relationship in which successor activity cannot begin before the predecessor has started so it's a little bit different so now the start of the successor depends on not the end of the predecessor no it depends on the start of the predecessor so the successor can start only if the predecessor starts as well. So actually they can both start at the same time or at the same day, or maybe this will start first and after some time, this one will start. But the thing is the start of B depends on the start of A. But here the start of P was depending on the end of A or the completion or the finish of A. So this is the, here we have the finish to start and we have the start to start. Now we have finish to start. Finish to start is a logical relationship in which activity cannot end before the predecessor has finished. So the end or the completion of B depends on the end of the A, of activity A. So in order for B to end, activity a must end as well and similarly they can both end at the same time or the end of b will come after the end of a by a specific period of time which is this so this relationship is a finish to finish and this relationship also is a finish to finish but they can finish at the same time or a can finish first and then after the finish of a by some time B also will finish. Okay, the fourth and last relationship that we have here is called start to finish. So 
It's a logical relationship in which the completion of successor is dependent on the initiation or the start of its predecessor. So what that means, in order for B to end, A has to start. So the end of B depends on the start of A. So the end of the successor depends on the start of the predecessor. And actually, guys, here, as we have discussed, we have finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. The most common ones that we usually use are finish to start and the start to start. Finish to finish will be there, but not to keep any open relationships. And when we go to scheduling itself, we can understand this better. But the start to finish, I have not encountered this or maybe in a very uh, small or minor uh, cases. Okay, so this is the activity relationships, the four types that we have discussed. Now, what is a dependency? Actually, a dependency here, we also have four types of activity dependency. And these four types of dependency can be applicable for any of the four relationships. So before we dig deeper into that, let's see what are the dependency types that we have. We have the first one, something that is called mandatory dependency or hard logic. And what is that? It's a relationship that is contractually required or inherent in the nature of work. And this is established based on solid facts that cannot be changed or altered. So, for example, here, as we have said, activity A has to finish in order for activity B has to start. So I'm going to be giving you an example. If we want to make a reinforced slab, for example, the first activity will be, let's say, form work for the RC slab. Then the second activity will be RC, uh, oh, sorry, a steel reinforcement for the RC slab. And so I have the form work and I'll put the steel reinforcement or I'll fix the steel reinforcement. After that, the third activity will be concrete casting. So here, let's say that A is steel reinforcement. So I have to do the steel reinforcement first and after steel reinforcement is finished, now I have installed all the reinforcement required, I'll go ahead and I'll cast the concrete. So in that case, this is a hard logic. It cannot be done otherwise, because how come I'm going to be casting concrete without doing the steel reinforcement for the slab? So this is inherent in the nature of work. It's, it's, it cannot be done uh, in, 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 in any other manner. It can be done only like that. It's still first, then you cast the concrete. So in that case, this is a hard logic. Or maybe you have something in the contract of the project that obligates you that you need to do A first, then after you finish A, you can do B. So again, even if B can be, uh, B can be done before A or not after A, as per the contract, you cannot do any change because it is a hard logic coming from a contract or from a fact that you cannot change. So A will be first, then B will come after that. So this, if this is the case, this is called a mandatory dependency or a hard logic. So coming to the second one, which is discretionary dependency, sometimes they call it soft logic or preferential logic. So what is that? This is a relationship that is established based on knowledge of best practices within a particular application area or an aspect of the project. So this is a dependency. We can say that B will come after A because this is a good practice. This is something that we usually do in our industry and it is always successful. And in, in programs, you will find that in, in the area where, where when you are doing the finishes, Sometimes they will, um, there will be a, a discussion on whether to do the flooring first or to do the ceiling first. So actually people prefer to do the ceiling first because they will put scaffolding and laborers will go on top of the scaffolding to do the ceiling works. So if I do the flooring first, I'll need to protect the flooring before putting these scaffoldings in order to do the ceiling. So actually doing the flooring first it is possible but people prefer to do the ceiling works first put the scaffoldings and do the ceiling works first and after finish the ceiling works they will remove the scaffolding then they will do the flooring 
This doesn't mean that the flooring cannot be done first and do a protection for that and put the scaffolding and do the ceiling works. So this example is a soft logic. It's, it's an industry practice to do the ceiling before the flooring, but it doesn't mean that I must do the ceiling first before the flooring. I hope it's clear, guys. By the way, guys, if you are enjoying the video so far, please don't forget to like the video. All right. So now we have something also that is called internal dependency. We have the mandatory dependency and the discretionary dependency. Now let's talk about internal dependency. Internal dependency is a relationship between project activities and are generally inside the project team control. So any relationship that can be controlled by the site team or the project team, this is an internal dependency. But external dependency is a relationship between project activities and non-project activities. So these four dependency types, they are applicable to any relationships of the four relationships that we have discussed here. So there is a difference between the relationship and the dependency. So in this case, finish to start, A has to finish in order for B to start. But is this a mandatory dependency or this is a uh, discretionary dependency? Is it a must that A must finish in order for B to start? Or it's a good practice, but if we don't do that, it's completely fine. This is the difference between a relationship and a dependency. And as I told you, this is applicable to all four relationships that we have here, the uh, finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and the start to finish. Okay, now we have something that is called lead and lag. And these are two very important aspects if you are going to be scheduling or programming or making a, a program or time schedule. So what is a lag? A lag is the amount of time whereby a successor activity is required to be delayed with respect to a predecessor. So this is the amount of time that the successor can be delayed with respect to the predecessor. And we will see an example now, don't worry. The lead is the amount of time whereby a successor activity can be advanced with respect to a predecessor. And what is the meaning of that? So let's take a look at the lag first. So as we said, this relationship is a finish to start. A has to finish in order for B to start, but not immediately, not like A will finish on day five, B will not start on day six. It's not immediately finished to start. No, there is a lag here. So B can start after the finish or after the completion of A by five days, which is a lag. So we call this lag. So as we said, the amount of time whereby a successor activity is required to be delayed with respect to the predecessor. So here we are delaying B with respect to A and the relationship is finished, finished to start normal. Okay, so this is the lag. Now the lead, as you can see, again, the relationship here is finished to start. A has to finish in order for B to start. But what's happening here is that, for example, A will finish on day 10. B will not start at day 11. No, B is starting here five days before the end of A. So this is a lead. As you can see here, the beginning of B depends on the end of A. That's fine because it's finished to start. But this beginning will happen five days before the end of A. So the lead is the amount of time whereby a successor activity can be advanced. It can be not delayed, no, advanced with respect to a predecessor as we can see in this example. Uh, this is it for the activity relationships. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notification, show us love guys, because we love you so much. Give us something in the comments. Let's have a small chat there. And uh, thank you so much for your valuable time watching this. Stay safe, take care of your families, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.